Hi, everybody. Today we're going to start um, talking about how to solve quadratic equations. Now, there's a lot of different methods that we're going to learn, so we're just going to talk about two different methods today, which is graphing and the square root method. First, I think it's important that you understand that um, when we're solving quadratics, what we're doing is we're finding the x-intercepts. That's what they're asking us to find. And we know that the x-intercept is when y equals 0. So sometimes you'll have two solutions if your parabola crosses your x-axis twice. Sometimes you have one solution, which is when your vertex is on your x-axis. And I like to think of that as a double root. Even though we only write our answer once, I want you to think of it as like two answers at the same point. And then sometimes you have no solutions. Um, so that's when your parabola just never crosses your x-axis. Now later on in this chapter, we will talk about ways to um, define what our solutions would be, but they are not going to be real solutions. They're actually called imaginary numbers. Um, so I just wanted you to be familiar with that now, but it's not something we'll talk about until uh, next week. So when you solve by graphing, all you have to do is graph your parabola, which you guys learned last chapter, and find the x-intercepts. Easy as that. And I would like to say that this method is not always the most accurate. It really only works well when you have nice whole number answers. So I just want you to know that any problems that I give you where I ask you to solve by graphing, um, there will be nice whole number answers. So if we have this equation, let's first graph it. So I need to use my vertex formula, negative b over 2a. So I can see that my x value is 1 half. I'm going to plug that in or substitute it to find my y value. I'm going to change my denominator while I can. Oops, over 4. So I get y equals negative 25 fourths, which is negative 6 and a fourth. Okay, so I'm going to... Sorry guys, let me pause the video. All right, sorry about that. Um, let's graph our vertex at one half negative six and a quarter. I'm gonna follow my one, three, five ratio. So I told you guys that um, all of these will have nice whole number answers. So if I make my graph, this one is going to cross right exactly at three. This one will cross right exactly at negative two. So that's my x-intercepts are negative 2 and 3. My answers are negative 2 and 3. That's it. All right, at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and give this problem a try. All righty, thank you for giving that a try. So you can see that first I wrote my equation in standard form, so I could use um, my vertex formula to find my vertex. So I got x equals negative 1, y equals 0. So that means my vertex is on my x-axis. Um, so remember, my graph, we could still graph it correctly. So it, it, the a value is negative 2, so it goes down. Um, but my answer is just x equals negative 1. So it's a double root at negative 1. All right, the other method we're going to talk about today is the square root method. Now, it does have a restriction, which you can see at the bottom, but let's first talk about the steps. First, you isolate the item that's being squared. Once you've done that, you have to take the plus or minus square root of both sides. Now, this method doesn't work if you have an x, square, or an x term uh, in your equation. However, um, there are a lot of quadratic equations that do not have that x term. So the, it, this method can be extremely useful, and it's typically quick and easy to use. So let's give it a try. Here's my x squared term. I'm going to isolate it. So I'll start by adding 31 to both sides, dividing by 4. From here, my next step is to take the plus or minus square root of both sides. Now squares and square roots are inverses, so they cancel each other out. And look, I'm already done solving for x. Now all I need to do is simplify my radical, which is 2 root 5, and here's my answer. So notice, I do have two answers here. I have positive 2 root 5 and negative 2 root 5. So that's why it's really important that you remember that plus or minus, because if you leave it out, you're leaving out an entire answer. All right, let's try another one. 
Here, let's isolate our variable or our squared term. And then we'll take the plus or minus square root of both sides. So as soon as you see something like this, where you are taking the square root of a negative, you can stop and you can write no solution. Because you cannot take the square root of a negative number and receive a real number. So I'm actually going to add in something here. No real solution. But right now we're just going to talk about only real numbers so there's no solution. Later on, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to talk about what's called imaginary number. But in terms of numbers you would see on a number line, this is these are not real solutions. Now let's just visualize what's happening here. This is still just a parabola. And you can actually tell what your vertex is. It, H is 0, K is 9. So my vertex is 0, 9. So it would be somewhere up here, if I count by 3's. And it's a positive parabola, so it's going up. So it's still a real parabola. It still has a vertex and a line. It just never crosses my x-axis. All right, here's the last example we're going to try together. So in this case, it's a little different because x is not the only thing being squared. It's x plus 3. So that's what I need to isolate. So I'll start by multiplying both sides by 5 and then dividing both sides by 2. You could do that in the same step if you wanted. And then I'm going from here, it's isolated, so I'm going to take the plus or minus square root. I don't need my parentheses anymore. x plus 3 equals the plus or minus square root of 25 over the square root of 2. Now, before we finish solving, let's work on simplifying this. I know that the square root of 25 is 5. However, you can't simplify the square root of 2. The only problem is there's a rule in math that you cannot leave a radical in your denominator. So we need to make sure that that radical goes away. And that process is called rationalizing. We need to rationalize our denominator. We'll talk more about this later in the year, but the quick way to do this is by taking your radical and by multiplying it to your numerator and denominator. I do want to remind you that root 2 over 2 is equal to 1. I'm multiplying by 1, so that's why it's a legal math move. Now let's talk about why it works. So 5 times the square root of 2 is just 5 root 2. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2, since they're both radicals, I can multiply them together as square root of 4. Well, luckily, square root of 4, you can simplify, and it just becomes 2. So now I no longer have a radical in my denominator. My last step is going to be to finish solving for x. So I need to subtract 3 from both sides. Negative 3 plus or minus 5 root 2 over 2. And now I am done. Okay, um, I want you guys to try this last problem. See if you can replicate the same steps that we talked about earlier. Okay, thank you for giving that a try. So hopefully you realize that um, once you've isolated x minus 4 squared and you take the plus or minus square root, your answer is no solution because you can't take the square root of a negative. However, if, just to show you what it would look like to finish simplif simplifying this, um, you can rationalize your denominator and finish solving for x, but it is still no solution. All right, that is all for today.